Side two of this audio tape discusses trailering tips, cautions, and special options you may have purchased to customize your new S10 pickup. There will be a few seconds of silence between each selection. Child restraint procedures. For the safety of children and infants traveling in your vehicle, you should always secure them in an infant or child seat restraint according to applicable laws. The information or instructions included with the infant or child seat will specify whether it should be used with an infant or an older child. With General Motors truck safety belts, there is no additional equipment necessary to secure the child or infant seat restraint in your vehicle unless the restraint requires a top anchor as specified by the restraint installation instructions. There are some very important procedures to follow when transporting an infant or child in your vehicle. A few tips to remember are, first, never hold a baby in your arms while you're riding in a vehicle. In a collision or sudden stop, the child would become almost impossible to hold. Second, when using a child seat restraint system, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the restraint. These restraints use the belt system of your vehicle, but the child also has to be secured within the child seat restraint to help reduce the chance of personal injury. The child seat restraint must be properly secured. Third, if your child restraint has a top strap, it will need to be anchored. You can have your GM dealer install an anchor bracket, or your dealer can instruct you on the installation procedures if you want to install the anchor yourself. If the child restraint has a top strap, always secure the restraint device at the location where the top strap can be anchored. Finally, be sure to properly secure any child seat restraint device in your vehicle even when no passenger is in it. An unsecured child seat can move around in a collision or sudden stop and injure people in the vehicle. For complete information on installing a child or infant restraint system in your vehicle, be sure to read Section 1 of the Owner's Manual. This information is of vital importance for the safety of you and your passengers. Off-road driving. For both you and your passenger's safety, please drive your pickup with care, both on or especially off-road. Two very important factors to keep in mind when off-roading are that both you and your passengers always wear safety belts and that you always drive on marked trails. As a special note, be sure to read the section in your owner's manual on off-roading safety tips and driving procedures. You'll find the information extremely helpful. Trailering Tips Your new Chevy pickup is a versatile vehicle designed to carry people and cargo. But bear in mind that towing a trailer and or carrying cargo will affect handling, durability and fuel economy. The certification label on the driver's door lock pillar offers information on maximum gross vehicle weight, maximum gross axle weights your vehicle can safely handle, and recommended tire inflation pressures. The maximum loaded trailer weight your vehicle can tow depends upon the total weight of the vehicle, including passengers, cargo, and additional options purchased. To learn more about the trailering aspects of your vehicle, your Chevy dealer can supply you with product literature which includes trailering tips and cautions, and can assist you in determining that your needs don't exceed the load or trailering capabilities of your new vehicle. The type of hitch you have is very important. If you have an aftermarket hitch, make sure it's properly installed and adjusted. Two very important hitch considerations for trailer weights over 2,000 pounds are that one, the hitch is a frame-mounted weight distributing hitch, and two, you install a sway control system of adequate capacity. Improper trailering or not following recommended trailering tips and cautions may cause handling problems. On trailer weights over 1,000 pounds, you should have trailer brakes. You can tow trailers lighter than 2,000 pounds with a step bumper hitch, but if your trailer tongue has a V-shaped foot, your bumper could be dented in sharp turns. See section 4 in the owner's manual for ways to correct this problem, and be sure to read the precautions and special techniques to use when towing a trailer. Tilt wheel and intermittent wipers. To operate the tilt wheel, pull the short lever on the steering column behind the turn signal lever towards you and adjust the steering wheel. The delay wipers allow you to vary the wiper sweep. The nearer the wiper control band is to the low position, the more often the wipers will cycle. The low and high positions provide continuous wiper action. Cruise control. 
the multifunction turn signal lever also regulates the operation of cruise control. To engage the cruise control, first turn it on, then accelerate to the desired speed and push the set button on the end of the turn signal lever. The cruise control disengages when you depress the brake or clutch pedal, or move the control switch to the off position. The off position will erase the memory of the cruise control. To resume your preset speed after braking or clutching, momentarily move the switch to the RA resume accelerate position. At speeds above 25 miles per hour, the system automatically recalls your preset speed. For more information on cruise control, see section 2 in the owner's manual. Four-wheel drive systems. With four-wheel drive, you'll be able to keep your vehicle moving through a wide variety of road conditions. You should avoid driving on dry pavement while in four-wheel drive. Driving with four wheels engaged on dry pavement will increase tire wear, cause hard transfer case shifting, and reduce fuel economy. If you have a manual Instatrack system, you can shift from two-wheel drive to four-high or four-high back to two-wheel drive at any speed. The front axle portion of the diagram on the transfer case indicator will light up when you shift into a four-wheel drive mode. As a special note, there may be a slight delay between shifting and the indicator light illuminating. If the front axle light on the transfer case shift console does not come on after shifting into a four-wheel drive mode, or the light stays on after shifting out of a four-wheel mode, see your authorized Chevrolet dealer for a system check. To shift into or out of four low or neutral, the vehicle speed must be below three miles per hour. Place the automatic transmission in neutral or depress the clutch on manual transmissions. Then press the transfer case shifting button on the shifter lever and shift with one continuous motion. Don't pause in the neutral range of the transfer case when shifting into four low, as this could result in some gear clash. And one final tip on the manual four-wheel drive system. The neutral position of your Instatrack system should only be used if the vehicle is being towed. Refer to Section 5 of the Owner's Manual for additional information on towing your vehicle. With the electronic shift four-wheel drive Instatrack system, shifting from two-wheel drive to four high or four low is as easy as pushing a button on your instrument panel and following some simple procedures. A two-position rocker switch in the upper left part of the instrument panel controls this feature. The rocker switch has three functions. With no light on the rocker switch illuminated, the transfer case is in the two-wheel drive mode. Pressing the top of the switch will actuate a blinking green light, indicating that the transfer case is about to shift from two-wheel drive to four high. When the vehicle has shifted from two-wheel drive to four high, the green light will remain illuminated. To shift from four high back into two-wheel drive again at any speed, press the top of the switch again. When the vehicle has shifted to the two-wheel drive mode, the green light will go out. To shift into four low from two-wheel drive or four high, press the bottom of the rocker switch. Pressing the bottom of the switch will actuate a blinking amber light, denoting that the transfer case is about to shift into four low. You can press the lower portion of the rocker switch for four low while the vehicle is moving, but the transfer case will not shift into four low until the vehicle speed is less than three miles per hour with the automatic transmission in neutral or the clutch depressed with a manual transmission. When the transfer case is in four low, the amber light on the rocker switch will remain illuminated. To shift out of four low, you must first shift to four high before you can shift to two wheel drive. Press the top of the rocker switch. This will activate a green blinking light. Slow the vehicle to under three miles per hour with the automatic transmission in neutral or the clutch depressed with a manual transmission and then the transfer case will engage the four high drive mode. The green light will remain illuminated when the shift to four high is complete. Then to shift into two wheel drive, press the top of the button again. When the blinking green light goes out, you are in the two wheel drive mode. In addition to other lubrication procedures for your vehicle, pay particular attention to the lubrication levels of the transfer case and the front differential. For more information on the transfer case operation, helpful off-road driving tips and maintenance procedures, see sections 2, 4 and 6 of the owner's manual. Air conditioning. Besides the heating and ventilation operations described earlier in this presentation, there are additional controls for the air conditioner. 
The right lever mode selector handles various cooling and heating requirements. The left temperature selector controls air temperatures from cold at the bottom to hot at the top. For maximum cooling, the max AC position recirculates interior air with very little outside air. Use this position with the temperature lever in the full down cold position. The norm AC position pulls in outside air, cools it, and then discharges it through the upper dashboard outlets. The bi-level AC position directs air through the upper and lower outlets. AM FM stereo radio with seek scan and digital clock with stereo cassette tape player. To play an audio tape, insert it with the exposed edge entering first. The tape will snap into position when fully inserted. Forward and reverse arrows allow you to move through your tape quickly. The DNR, Dynamic Noise Reduction button, reduces background hiss on both the radio and cassette tapes. To switch playing sides of the tape without removing it, press the upper left volume control knob. Avoid using C120 tapes in your player. These tapes are very thin and may break or get tangled in the drive mechanism. For information and maintenance tips for your tape player, see Section 3 of the Owner's Manual. AM Stereo FM Stereo Radio with Seek Scan and Digital Clock and Stereo Cassette Tape Player with Search, Repeat and Graphic Equalizer. To play an audio tape, insert it with the exposed edge entering first. The tape will snap into position when fully inserted. To advance the tape, press the forward button. To rewind to an earlier portion of the tape, press the button. To stop the forward or reverse movement, press the opposite button lightly. To listen to the next selection on a cassette tape, first slide the search button to the right, and then to press the forward button. The tape will automatically stop at the next selection. By using the reverse button, you can replay the tape selection which you just played. To switch playing sides of the tape without removing it, press the upper left volume control knob. The loudness button boosts the bass frequencies when the stereo is played at low volumes. The CRO2 chromium dioxide button adjusts the audio quality for chromium or metal tapes, and the AMST button is for AM stereo broadcasts. The graphic equalizer adjusts the frequency response ranges of your stereo. Avoid using C120 tapes in your player. These tapes are very thin and may break or get tangled in the drive mechanism. For information and maintenance tips for your tape player, see Section 3 of the Owner's Manual. Engine Block Heater. This feature is designed to keep your engine block warm for improved cold weather starting. To use the heater, open the hood and unwrap the electrical cord stowed in the engine compartment. Plug the cord into any three-prong 110-volt AC outlet. If the cord is too short, use a heavy-duty three-prong extension cord. Fog Lamps. To operate the fog lamps, turn on the headlights and press the fog lamp switch located under the headlight switch. A light on the switch illuminates to remind you the fog lamps are on. The fog lamps go off when the headlights are switched to high beams. When the headlights are switched back to low beams, the fog lamps will come on again. Press the fog lamp switch to turn the lamps off. This completes side two of this audio cassette. We thank you for taking the time to listen, and again, congratulations on the purchase of your S10 pickup.